guys, Andrea, welcome back to the channel. So guys, let me know if you want me to do a deep dive in this one, but it's professionalism in support. So that's something that is a very hot button debate at the moment, both within agencies and independent support workers. And it's more than the simple things that identify you as a support worker, whether that being a work lanyard, whether that be wearing a uniform. Um, I actually prefer my community service agency to wear a uniform. It is mandatory for them unless the client requests it or it would be unsafe for the client. Um, a lot of the time I've seen this debated on Reddit or Facebook community pages saying, oh, I don't want my support worker or I don't want my grandson support worker or my nephew. Um, they're not the person's primary carer. And that's the thing. They may know the full story, but they may not. Um, some people, fair enough, don't want them to know that they're a support worker. Some people are able to. So that's a really interesting thing. Then the second one is your communication. So this is one that is a bit of a personal bugbear of mine, is that making sure everyone in your house is getting support. Um, just a bit of a bugbear, I work up to my support worker on the phone being incredibly loud. They all know I have super sensitive hearing. I was shaking, my tablets were given to me 15 minutes late because she was dealing with stuff in her personal life. And that's the thing, personal life does cross over into support because some of the best support workers are the ones who have disabled people in their life. They get what it's like. But this person... But how does one say it? Does the bare minimum. Uh, because she's in the in-group, can get away with it. And because of the upstairs, downstairs, it's becoming a bigger issue. Because, oh, I've got a bad back, I'm not downstairs. Okay, well, what happens when I'm dizzy and can't get upstairs and have a fall? So that's the other thing, is you need to look after your fitness, both physical and emotional. Uh, mental. So that might be seeing a mentor, that might be talking to the main support worker, that might be seeing a psychologist, a counsellor, someone trained that is going to keep things confidential. And that's the other thing, a lot of people don't realise coming into support how much paperwork there is. Um, if they, so if you're in a still house, there will also be a level of housework that you need to do. It's not about being the adult in the room and bossing the clients around. It's about working and developing those relationships with the clients. So I'm going to do a longer podcast on types of support. But that is kind of a really interesting one of what people consider professional in support. And so guys, tablets, especially for people with epilepsy and other movement disorders, they are critically time sensitive. If you're going to criticise someone's diet, which is they're complaining about not feeling well, you better be able to back that up with giving them the time and the energy to work with them to improve their diet. Uh, that's the thing because one of our residents in here who is actually there has extreme behaviors of concern but due to her right to socialize comes over and therefore unfortunately there are times when she needs more support i do get that but it does frustrate me that i am paying for the care and i get the bare minimum and that's the thing then I contrast that with my community services agency. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And so I've got to take the good with the bad, as we all do. Uh, that's the thing, you're going to get people who are undertrained, who forget that I'm down here, who will be frustrated and therefore will take it out on clients. That's not okay. And it's not okay for clients to take it out on you guys either. And so this is where I'm a big advocate of having a minimum level of training. So in Australia, 
it's not mandated like nursing or the system in nursing or RN that you have to have that level of training but it is suggested that you do your certificate three in individual support um, disability services which teaches you hoisting personal care dieting diets budgeting as well and so professionalism looks different to other people it's more than wearing your uniform correctly but that certainly goes into it but it's also giving the clients the level of support they need not making them feel like the class participant making them sure that they are seen that their needs are being met because if you're and then the other one is doing accurate notes incident reports it's not about you doing an incident report it's not a reflection on you, you're not doing. The reason that this participant can't get the help she needs is because support workers won't do the incident reports. But I get my computer back today, so I'm going to be able to focus a lot more on the goals as well. So that one's a really interesting one to be able to look at as well and so guys then it comes down to how much paperwork you're doing are you in a cell house are you doing a tick and click if you're at a day in community center are you engaging with participants or are participants in one area and you're in another no you need to have that mix are you encouraging that participant who has difficult and challenging behaviors are you getting to the root of that are you encouraging them to verbalize what's wrong um this is the thing i've got one support worker that i very dearly respect in the house but because she doesn't have a lot of time she has not been able to get to know me get my medical history um she has a second job uh, because i do struggle with a parasomnia which is night eating my cpap compliance isn't great she has a job around CPAPs, I'm not sure what doing, but then thinks it's okay to discipline me. Yes, correction is part of it, and choice and control is also part of it, but a five to ten minute conversation when she's saying, oh, you're complaining about headaches, these will take headaches away. No, it won't. No, it won't. Um, until I had to afford to, to listen about the Chiari, I did get a full apology. And that's the thing, listening to your clients, listening to what they're saying, um, getting to the bottom of it, really, really important. And so that's another thing, is not taking things personally. Really important thing in support as well, not taking things personally, not getting in a panic if things are piling up. You might need to have, sit down and have that cup of coffee and put the washing up aside, put the laundry aside to be able to focus on that person. And so professionalism